Hello, and welcome to a session of Centennial College at the library. If you're just joining us, you can find us at library.centennialcollege.ca. And remember, if you're entering our virtual library space, our online collections, they're only a click away with your MyCentennial login credentials. In today's session, we'll be talking about the concept of good citation practice. And now let me introduce you to this fellow, a world-renowned Springer Spaniel named Scamp. As you can see from the caption, he plays a very important role, such as, Sir, the dog ate my assignment again. Can you believe it? He did it again. Keep that in mind for your next assignment. And now here's what we'll do in more detail. If you recall these three individuals, Perry, Phineas, and Ferb, and their renowned television show, which is soon to hit the big, big screen, at the beginning of every episode, Phineas says to Ferb, Ferb, I know what we're going to do today. And indeed, here is what we are going to do today. We are going to talk about why sight, introduce quoting directly, paraphrasing, say something about the reference list, and a word or two about formatting, all wrapped up in our program of good citation practice. Why cite? To cite or not to cite? These are questions that we will have to address today. What does it mean to cite? What does it mean to write things like Trudeau, comma, 1992, comma, page, period, 238, wrapped in brackets? Let's explore it in this multiple, multiple choice question. Why cite? There may be more than one correct answer. Let's read through. A. To acknowledge your active participation in the research community. B. To inform your readers or reader of the origin of ideas and words that you have used. C. To facilitate future research, making it easier to recall some of the sources you may wish to explore further. Or D. To ensure a better grade on your assignment. I don't know about you, but Let's go with the first three, A, B, and C, and we'll reserve D in our back pocket for a later time. To cite or not to cite. Let's, let's explore citing words and citing ideas. By citing words and ideas together, we're using the direct quote format. By citing ideas, we're using the paraphrase format. We'll explore these ideas in more detail. Fortunately, as we do so, there's a way to standardize our writing process. We can take advantage of the publication manual of the American Psychological Association and all of its 272 pages and in a new seventh edition to boot. As you might expect, this wonderful edition is accessible in the library's collection. There are several copies at each campus, and using our grab-and-go service, one of them can be yours for a period of time. It's hard to imagine, but it's true. A couple words, a few numbers, they make all the difference in communicating to your readers in a succinct manner. Let's carry on by having a look at quoting directly and paraphrasing using an example, using an example from this book, The Naked Presenter, also found in the library's collections. Let's 
This is an excerpt. Let's read part of it. Even if visuals are projected behind you, there is no need to turn your head to look back except for the very briefest of moments. When you gesture towards the screen, stand so that your shoulders are facing in the direction of the audience. I think you get the idea. Let's move forward. Quoting directly is a process where you take some of the author's exact words and introduce them into your own paper while acknowledging where they came from. Here are some examples of individuals trying to do just that. Let's have a look at, few, at a few of them. In working with slides, when you gesture toward the screen, stand so that your shoulders are facing in the direction of the audience. This first example is a direct quote. However, there's no indication as to why it's a direct quote. Let's move on. We'll skip a couple. We'll go here. In working with slides, quote, when you gesture toward the screen, stand so that your shoulders are facing in the direction of the audience, quote, page 84. While this example captures the exact words within quotation marks and gives us a page reference, it leaves out important details, such as what the source is that is being used. Let's move on. How about this final one? In working with slides, quote, when you point at the screen, stand so that your shoulders are facing the audience. Quote, brackets, Reynolds, page 84. This example is useful in that it's included a partial in-text citation, given the author and the page reference. But what if you, the writer, used two sources written by Reynolds? We wouldn't know which one to turn to. And furthermore, the quotation is incomplete. It's been altered, and it does not reflect the precise words of the author. Let's carry on. Here are some examples of quoting directly well. In working with slides, the author advises that, quote, when you gesture towards the screen, stand so that your shoulders are facing in the direction of the audience. Reynolds, 2011, page 84. In this example, In this example, we have a complete in-text citation with the author's surname, the year of publication, and the page where you derived the information. And it's quoted correctly. In the second example, during a slide presentation, Reynolds, 2011, recommends that as you, you quote, gesture towards the screen, stand so that your shoulders are facing in the direction of the audience. Page 84. In APA, while it is a standardized way of writing, it also allows flexibility in terms of allowing you to be creative in how you express yourself. In these two examples, you can either place the in-text citation in its complete form at the end of a sentence, or you can break it up, as in the second example. Let's move on to paraphrasing. As we noted earlier, paraphrasing is using your own words and borrowing or bringing along the idea of the writer you happen to be using. We'll explore some of these examples, again, with the same sentence. When you gesture towards the screen, Stand so that your shoulders are facing in the direction of the audience. Here are some examples of attempting to paraphrase. When you point at the screen, 
Stand so that your upper body is facing in the direction of the crowd. Next, to make the best use of your slides, as you gesture towards the screen, stand so that your shoulders are facing in the direction of the audience at all times. Next, when you gesture towards the screen, stand so that your shoulders are facing the audience. And finally, stand so that your shoulders are facing in the direction of the audience when you gesture towards the screen. Let's find out what's going on in each of these examples. In the first example, the author has simply used the practice of substitu substitution, changing a couple words here and there. Instead of gesture, we've substituted point. Instead of shoulders, we've substituted upper body. In the second example, we see the practice of addition. This means that words have been added to the beginning and end of the paraphrase. And in this other example, deletion, the opposite, some words have been taken away. And finally, reversal, you get the picture. Now here is an example of a paraphrase that has gone well. When giving a presentation, the presenter should try to face the audience as much as possible. In this case, the writer has used their own words and taken the idea and cited it correctly with an in-text citation, making use of the surname, publication date, and page number. Before we go on, let's take a little break. It's time for trivia. It's time for political trivia. It's time for Canadian political trivia. If you think Donald Trump is a bruiser, which he is, check this out. Which Canadian Prime Minister, yes, that's right, a Canadian Prime Minister, which one locked his hands around an unemployed protester's neck in a kind of chokehold on the 31st birthday celebration of the Canadian flag? Was it Brian Mulroney, John Turner, Jean Chrétien, Stephen Harper, or Donald Trump? We'll take a second to consider these answers. Well, let's see. Ah, oh, yes, Brian Mulroney. He takes the blame for many things, but in this case, he kept his hands to himself. The answer is that guy right there. Mr. Sunglasses, Jean Chrétien. The chokehold in Quebec sometimes is now known as the Schoenigan handshake. Search it up. You'll be shocked and awed. Now that we have had a look at the question, why cite, and delved into examples of direct quoting and paraphrasing, let's turn our attention to the reference list. We'll do that by opening up this particular article, Crafting the American Culture. We'll do that by turning to the library's online library. You can get to the online library in a few ways, but we'll do this, e-resources. And we'll open a collection, Business Source Complete. We'll enter the collection name, Business Source Complete. And we'll click and go. Remember earlier I mentioned the login credentials? Use your My Centennial credentials to get access. This will only take a minute.
Remember the title of our article, Crafting the American Culture? Let's go there. Crafting the American Culture. We'll give that database a heads up. We'll say, hey, database, search the title field. Let's get on with it. We'll open up to an information sheet that tells us about the article. In addition to the actual article in the PDF, you have access to a few things, such as an abstract that gives you a heads up about what the article is about, subject terms that help you explore other related articles in a straightforward manner, and you also have ex the information you need to create your reference list entry. You have title, author, source information, volume issue, and page range. You even have this handy feature that we'll discuss later, the citation link that magically transforms the information on the screen to an APA entry. Let's have a look and see what it does. There we go, APA. The reference is all done. Probably. If you don't like APA, you can use other styles such as MLA. But right now, let's stick with our APA reference. We'll come back to this in a few minutes. Here's an example of reading part of the article and drawing out ideas that we want to paraphrase. We'll start here. Craft beers often present unique flavors, ingredients, or brewing methods that can entice the ever flavor conscious consumer. We can even scroll down to things like, she adds that one of the strongest factors driving appeal and growth in the craft segment is its local roots. As we read, we can absorb some of these ideas and put them into our own paraphrased sentence such as appears on the next screen. According to the author, 2015, the craft beer consumer is drawn to a variety of flavor profiles and the product's local roots. In this example, we've included all the parts of an in-text citation, the author's name, the year of publication, and the pages on which the ideas were found. And we've written the sentence in our own words while maintaining the idea of the author. Once again, as I mentioned, in the world of APA, you have access to the new 7th edition. If you are like me and don't relish the idea of reading through 272 pages of a publication manual, you can draw on the library's APA short guide reference. Let's do that now. You can do this by returning to the library's homepage. We'll scroll through to the library guides. There's many guides to choose from. Let's use the alphabetical list and go directly to our APA manual our APA guide. Here we go, APA style. There are several things you can explore here, including access to the Academic Writer Program. This program allows you to explore APA in several ways. I'll just highlight one example. Within the pages of Academic Writer, here's one thing you can do. You can consult their quick guides. There are quick guides to citing sources, 
and there are quick guides to other things, including how to structure a reference list for a book reference, a journal article, a magazine article, a newspaper article, and so forth. Let's go to the magazine article, for example. You can start learning on your own. I just thought I'd introduce this feature. As we saw, Academic Writer leads to many options for quick guides. Additionally, you can take advantage of the library's guide to gain access to the structure of a reference list for different information sources. Here is how. We'll take a step back to the guide. Oops, it seems we've gone back a little too far. Let's try that again. Going back to the library guides. Selecting the alphabetical list. Scrolling down. APA style. It's waiting for you. You can scroll down some more. Down the left hand side are examples of how to set your reference entry for books, articles, websites, images, and so forth. Let's have a look under the Articles tab. While we haven't created an exhaustive list, we have created a list of items students frequently use, such as this one. Citing examples from newspapers or magazine articles from a database. This is the one that appears on my screenshot. You can do a couple of things here. You can follow along with the standard form where you enter author information, publication date information, title information, source information, as well as volume issue number and the page references. You also get example, an example of an actual article in a magazine, and you get the structure of in-text citations as well. Now let's return to our crafting the American culture example. And you see you have all the information in front of you. We can go ahead and make that structure. Here's what it should look like. You have the author information, followed by the publication date information, title, source title, volume issue, and page references. Remember when we looked at the database itself and the citation feature within the database? Here is what Business Source Complete produced for us for that particular article. Let's refresh our memory in the actual database. We'll return to crafting the American culture and you see the APA reference here. And we can note some problems. There's mistakes lurking, mistakes that we have to be aware of. For some reason, the author information and the title information are all in capital letters. This is not according to APA. In fact, the database knows about these things. That's why they've given you a little heads up. It says, review the instructions at EBSCO Connect and make any necessary corrections before using. Pay special attention to personal names, capitalization, and dates. Always consult your library resources. Let's say that again. Always consult your library resources for the exact formatting and punctuation guidelines. 
imagine imperfections within a machine. Let's carry on to our final piece. We'll say a few things, or one or two things, about formatting. As you can see, the font choice is very important. The craft beer consumer is drawn to a variety of flavor profiles. Reads better in some fonts than in other fonts. In formatting, you'll want to pay attention to clarity and white space and a few other things that you can draw from the library's APA guide, such as access to an APA paper template and access to APA formatting tips. And here they are here. Back to the library's APA guide. We'll scroll up. And we'll scroll down a little bit. Here we go. Off to the side, getting started. That's what I always like to do. We'll get started here. APA formatting tips and your APA paper template. It's waiting for you to fill out your own information. As we draw to a close, I just want to say thank you for joining me on our exploration of good citation practice. If you have questions or comments, you can reach me at my email address, rsims at centennialcollege.ca. And best of luck.